can I say something to you about the further development of why I'm going to make the statement about the birthers and the 9-11 the, uh, truthers here today? I do know this, that the government can be, in many ways, consider it a noble thing to let its citizens die to advance its cause against an enemy. And I remember studying the life and times of Winston Churchill, and it is written clearly that during the height of the war and Hitler's Luftwaffe and the general had planned to bomb England and had been bombing England, Churchill and uh, the uh, British forces had broken Hitler's code and had recognized in translating Hitler's plans in code that they were going to bomb Coventry that night. And uh, it was up to Winston Churchill to make the decision whether or not to evacuate Coventry, or a town of more than 12,000 people, or to let the people be bombed. And if he ev evacuated Coventry, then Hitler would have known that he had broken his code. That would have been the only way he could have found out. And Churchill was faced with the decision, either allow Hitler to know that he has broken his code that he'll be using throughout the war, or allow Hitler to bomb Coventry. And Churchill made the decision that leaders have to make in the privacy before God. He allowed that city to be bombed that night, and they bombed it. I mean, the Luftwaffe came in and bombs dropped for hours. And nearly all the citizens of Coventry had no warning. Their president, their leader, their nation gave them no warning that death is in the sky. And so it was. But it advanced the cause of the war and protected the lives of others because they had broken the code and they could now read what Hitler was doing and stop a lot of other bombers, or at least that's what Churchill believed. The same thing happened with President Roosevelt. He had broken the intelligence and had been following the Japanese and watching them beating the war drums. When they were saying to bomb Pearl Harbor, our intelligence forces were able to break that code and knew when those planes left the aircraft carrier that morning that they were headed for Pearl Harbor. And those planes flew in from that Japanese aircraft carrier and began to bomb like nobody's business. And Roosevelt knew it was coming, but it didn't sound the alarm. Sometimes leaders make these kinds of decisions and they make them, they believe, for the good of the nation. So now, having said those things have been documented in history, that both Churchill and Roosevelt made these decisions because they, and people died, but they thought it was for the good of the nation. Don't tell me that the leaders of our nation within the CIA and George Bush and others did not, and Bill Clinton, make the decision to use those planes to bring down the World Trade Center that it might preserve the life of other Americans. Of course, I don't believe they're that noble. But it certainly is a plausible plan. It's worked before, they've used it before, and they're going to use it again. But I can tell you why the A-train wasn't bombed because there would have been no way to give people an opportunity to escape. I'm not the smartest engineer. In fact, I'm not even an engineer. But I'm confident that if you want to take down a building, you don't cut off the top of it. I mean, if you want to see a tree fall, you lay the axe to the root of the tree and not to the top of it. That defies physics, my brothers and my sisters. Unless... There was a planned demolition that had long since been in place. So I want to announce here today, as being a Bertha, that I now want to fully and publicly state that I am joining with all of my strength, all of my resources. In everything that I am, I'm joining the 9-11 Truthers movement, and I'm calling for all Berthas and all Truthers to unite and let's get rid of this evil that's in our nation, that's in our land, that's destroying our people, destroying our church, glorifying the devil, and mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. I am now a 9-11 truther. And 
if you think, if you think I gave them hell as being a Bertha, wait until you see what I'm going to do as a 9 11 trooper. I want to know why did our government attack its citizens on 9-11 and then turn around and blame the Muslims for doing it and start a war in Afghanistan and Iraq. I want to know. And if God was able to give me the ability to discover how Obama was able to get into the White House, I'm going to get to the bottom of 9-11 and we're going to know the truth and God's going to get the glory and boom shakalaka goes right there. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. I'm through. But listen to this. With all of the intelligence agencies and implements of detection, crime fighting, tracking GPS, for nine years, they have not been able to find Osama bin Laden. Do you believe that? Huh? I want to know why they haven't found Osama bin Laden, and I can tell you why. They need an enemy out there. They need a villain. They need Osama alive if he is indeed of any kind of importance. My friends, our nation has become so corrupt, it ain't even funny anymore. It just is not funny at the corruptness that's going on in our nation. I've waited nine years. As I stated, and I wanted to be clear about what I'm stating, I would not speak from this holy desk the things I've said unless I was absolutely clear. It is not my intent to ever charge anybody foolishly. But I can tell you, our government will kill its own citizens. And my friends, we've got to clean up our government. And I can tell you now, this hullabaloo about what's going on with the Tea Party, the Republicans and the Democrats is worse than what's going on in Washington now. That is not the cleaning up of our government until we began to apply the blood of Jesus, the cleansing power of the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. There will be no, we have got to Lift the name of Jesus up once again. And men and women who know the power of God have got to stand up in the church and demand that these crooks, these liars, these perverts that are in Washington now, that they all must go. And we can have no president for a while, but we can have God as our king. He's able to lead us. He's able to keep us. He's able to feed us. He's able to defend us. Until we can get a man and get people that are willing to go to our courts and mitigate justice the way justice needs to be meted out to the people. People in Congress that will make laws that are just laws for the people. And a president who recognizes that God is his head. And on Christmas Day, when it is the birthday of Jesus, he celebrates like the rest of us. He does not go play basketball with his homosexual friend while the rest of us are celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, singing old little town of Bethlehem and silent night and the first Noel. This low life heathen is in the gym with his homosexual lover. I'm ready! So let's get started. We're going to discover the truth. And I want to tell you that my God, he is able. We will get to the bottom of what's going on. This nation will not become Sharia. This nation will not become led by Muslims. Indeed, it is the biblical, noble, constitutional thing to do to drive Muslims from this land. Let them go back to the burning sands of Saudi Arabia. Let them go back to the hills of Afghanistan. But get them out of Americans unless they want to confess 
Jesus as Lord, be washed in the blood of Jesus, then go back to your goat herding, sand walking tent, if you will, goat cheese eating, raghead nations, and be Muslims there. But not here. 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 So Alex Jones, you got another soldier, bro. Hallelujah. Praise Almighty God. I'm ready. Give me my ammunition. I'll take my marching orders, and I pray that y'all will march with me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise his name. Not law. That's what God said. That's what God said. That's